welcome back to Weir Yard up here in the loft and there's not really a huge amount been going on since the last update video but uh, one of the things I have done is uh, when I did the review video on the Hornby Scale Scenics trees you can see there are two of the fruit trees which uh, uh, were featured prominently in that review and during that review I said that you could uh, use hairspray and an assortment of scatters to really kind of bring them to life and that is exactly what I've done with these so I'm just trying to get in there nice and close and you can see that the hairspray has allowed the different scatters, I use two different colours of scatter to stick to the uh, sponge that the, the main foliage is made from and that in turn has meant that we've got a build up of this textures and colours which I always think is very important when building a model because um, you know building up the different textures and colours goes a long long way towards making the landscape look a lot better in my opinion <laughs> people have been commenting um, over a little while now about putting lights into buildings and what you can see over there is that I finally wired up this building so uh, we've got an assortment of lights in there and I'm just going to reach behind me and you can see there turn off turn on turn off turn on and what I'm going to do is uh, actually let's turn some of the lights in here off just to try and get a uh, see if I there try and cast a shadow on it you can see that it's not too bad actually we've got lights inside the building and then there's three lights on the outside and that's all wired back to one of those spare on off switches which I talked about in one of the previous videos so um, as you can see I'm making a little bit of progress with lighting up some of these buildings so I know some of you will be quite pleased to learn about that because you've been uh, uh, telling me for a little while that I needed to do that and uh, don't you worry so it's well in hand first buildings uh, done and in so I'm going to be turning my attention to two other sets of buildings which I want to put lights into and uh, those terraced houses over there they did have lights in when they were out on uh, Bolton Trinity Road and those lights have ended up being stripped out um, because of the nature of how they were when, when those were salvaged but uh, I do want to add some lights back in so they are on my hit list it's going to be quite tricky to do because I'm going to have to do it from underneath so essentially using uh, some of the holes for the dropper wires for the track and also the power that goes to the Bates Motel that allows that to light up as a reference point for roughly where those houses are to be able to drill carefully through from underneath. So um, that's the plan. Uh, watch this space and hopefully all of that will uh, come together. Uh, but the other place which uh, I talked about a bit in a previous video is uh, this particular place. I know we're uh, a lot of people have suggested various different things that that could be and essentially some kind of meteorology college, something like that. Um, there are apparently places where multiple services will send their personnel for training because it's a, an, a, a particular subject matter that is applicable to multiple forces. So it was suggested meteorology, um, things to do with weather, would be quite applicable to, in particular, the RAF and the Royal Navy. So, yep, that, I'm going to go with that, so thanks for that suggestion. So it's some kind of uh, forces college teaching that kind of thing. Uh, but that building does need a set of lights. In fact, I can't remember whether I glued this down. Um, no, I didn't, actually. So that, that will actually make that a lot easier to fit lights, because it, what it means is I can take that building out fit the lights in it and then just drill a big hole right down through the the hill 
and uh, through the baseboard underneath that will allow me to run power up into that building. So that actually isn't going to present too much of a problem to add lights to. It's just simply a case of getting round to it, which <laughs> I think a lot of people would say, yeah, know that well. Getting round to it. Um, I do need a round to it. I must go out and buy one. Um, very good for uh, putting cat food on. Um, a good old round to it. Um, other things I've been up to, I've been putting other people dotted around. So Hike has now got a girlfriend. And um, where else? Oh yes, uh, to go back to Signal Cabin. We've got a worker there with some other worker guy there leaning on things, probably having a cigarette. Um, got to remember, this is the unionised uh, Britain's railways of the sort of uh, mid to late 1970s, ostensibly, I think. Um, I'm not really fixed on time scales, to be honest with you. Now, you can see over there that we've got some people crept in up there. I've also got some people down here as well. Um, I do still have quite a big stash of people to um, put out on the layout. And I'm going to work through them, but not necessarily all of them are suitable for just anywhere. And this is the, I suppose you'd call this a little bit of an Easter egg. Um, Sexy Santa Girl. Uh, that was retrieved from a layout that was built for a different project um, to be able to be filmed. So Sexy Santa's helper has made it here and it's it's behind this wooden uh, upright. So from normal viewing angles, you never actually see her. So that's the reason that she's ended up there. Um, I don't know, I just, I had the figure so it seemed logical to uh, find a way of uh, putting that in somewhere. Now, um, I've, Completed this shelf. I th I, did I talk about that in the last video? I don't think I did actually. Or did I? I can't remember. <laughs> it's been... I've been so busy it's easy to forget what we've talked about. But you can see here that uh, what we've actually got is a huge amount of railway locomotives up here. And this actually does now represent a good deal of my collection. There are still others down in display cabinets downstairs. But um, the 50 on the end is, is not DCC fitted, but the one next to it is sound fitted. And then we run through all of these. All of these are DCC fitted uh, until you get to um, the Drummond 700 is the last DCC fitted locos on the shelf. And then we've got the Hatton's P class there, the Adams radial. These here are waiting to be DCC fitted and uh, it's simply a case of um, essentially um, get round to it. Um, it's an expensive process so and also these ones up here these are all still just DC locomotives so they're all waiting as well um, but I have bought some more uh, chips from Hatton's. Uh, I went there on Monday, so I picked up uh, six uh, chips. Uh, I got a bulk pack of five of their eight pin chips and uh, then a single uh, Hornby four pin chip. And the reason I got that is because uh, the Hornby four pin chips are very, very good, in my opinion, for hard wiring locomotives that are not billed as being DCC ready. So I'm trying to think, actually, uh, which loco did I hardwire? Um, I have a feeling, yes, I actually hardwired this Class 8 here, 08243. It's a Backman Class 8, but it's before they made them DCC ready. So there's no um, socket in there at all. Um, so a top tip for you, the Hornby 4-pin DCC decoder is certainly something which I well recommend getting to hardwire a lot of these locos. In fact, they're so easy to use for hardwiring. Obviously, you can use them for the locos they're designed for, like the W4 Peckett and the Hornby Sentinel Shunter. But for other locomotives, 
let's not mess about with these big bulky 8-pin wiring harness things. No, Hornbeat 4-pin decoder gets straight in there. So if you're struggling to find a good source for these, then do check out the affiliate links down below. And um, then that's a way of helping the channel, but that's me helping you by pointing to you to the cheapest uh, option that I have found to buy these chips, um, which is from Hatton's. Other progress going on? Well, I've added a little bit more to the hidden fiddle yard. I haven't got a light handy, so really <laughs> not anything to see at the moment. But I, I've um, laid an extra two full tracks all the way to the wall over there. And I've got close to 70 full BR Mark I coaches in there. There's still uh, four more tracks to get, make the baseboards to extend them all the way. And also then a lay track. And you can see there piling up some of the, the rest of my, uh, my Mark I coach collection in there. Some Suburbans. And they're just sat there blocking the track, waiting for that to happen. And there's not actually a lot of my coaches left that aren't physically sat on rails. And I'm really pleased about that. And you can see up here, there's a few more wagons gone down into the sidings. But uh, essentially, most of my collection is now sat on the rails, uh, apart from the locomotives that you've seen on the shelf. Um, and... There's only a few more trays of wagons. Um, I've, I've got some display cabinets full of my private owner wagon and pre-nationalisation wagons downstairs. But essentially, there's almost nothing left um, stored in boxes, which I think is important. I don't think there's any point in having a model railway collection long term that is in sat in storage and is just simply not um, there to see and it doesn't have easy access. I mean, I know obviously for some people um, space can be an issue, but certainly in the long term, my aim was always to get everything out and I'm really pleased. So you see there, all my 25s now are DCC fitted. Um, the, the Bankman Class 25 does, even from when they were first introduced, were DCC ready. You'll, what you'll find is there's there's some 8-pin ones and there's 21-pin ones. Now, an easy way of knowing the difference, the uh, ones that have directional lights are the 21-pin ones. And if they don't have directional lights, what it means is that they are on an 8-pin chassis and the 8-pin chassis do not have directional lights. So that's an easy way of telling them apart. Um... But yeah, that's where we're up to. Oh, and one final thing. Will's Very Gerda kit, just over there. I built um, the, the, the Gerda part of the bridge. Put that in. That is glued in. I'm probably going to consider putting a support there, or at least hide that with trees. I know there's not really a lot I can do about that wire up there. Maybe paint it blue to match the, the background. But um, essentially, what you're seeing with Weir Yard is... Pretty much um, complete, just waiting for embellishments. So there we are. But uh, thanks again for joining me for this update video uh, here in the loft on Weir Yard with me, Jenny Kirk. It's been really great to have your company. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share it too. And uh, also, um, don't forget we've got videos going up on Wednesdays and Fridays. And we've got the Jenny Monday Club every single Monday. You're more than welcome to join us. It's always great to have your company. But until then, you take really good care of yourself. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.